Selamat datang. Welcome to Brunei Darussalam. A tiny sultanate in the north of the island of Borneo, located on the shores of the South China Sea. And surrounded by the Malayan federal states of Sabah and Sarawak. The capital, Bandar Serai Begawan, looks like something from an exotic fantasy. The splendor of the mosque of Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin is a captivating sight. This Islamic landmark is also a symbol of great wealth and was built in 1958. It was named after the father of the present Sultan. Snow white Italian Carrara marble was used as a building material with granite from Shanghai. It commemorates the founder of modern Brunei. The same dynasty has been in power here since the 15th century when the country had become an Islamic sultanate due to a marriage. Then, Islam extended throughout Borneo. Although modern life has inevitably transformed this place, the commandments of Islam continue to be strictly observed. A stone bark appears to float on an artificial lake outside the mosque, and its golden cupolas shine out in all their splendor. The prayer rooms in the interior possess an abundance of precious carpets from Belgium and Saudi Arabia, as well as chandeliers and glass from England. Non-Muslims are only allowed access when no prayers are taking place. Today's Brunei is also known as Daru Salam, meaning place of peace. But it has not always been peaceful. The capital has always been here on the Brunei River. The Sultan's palace was on the mainland. And his people lived in river dwellings. The enemy always attacked from across the river, whether the pirates, the Portuguese, or the Spaniards. When Brunei became a mini-state, England became the dominant power here. England controlled Brunei as a protectorate from 1888, and the British governor resided on the banks of the river, between the old and the new city. The Dubongan Duabelis, a building with 12 roofs, was the center of power and was well fortified. Behind this building was a garden with a luxurious swimming pool, plus, of course, some large cannons. In 1971, Great Britain guaranteed Brunei complete autonomy. And on the 1st of January 1984, the country gained its independence. The air-conditioned exhibition rooms of the Brunei Museum feature various objects that date back to prehistoric times. including huge dinosaur bones that were found nearby. On the first floor, there is an ethnological collection that focuses on Malayan culture, with clothing and scenes of everyday life.
The history of Brunei is also featured and old domestic tools indicate the great transformation that has taken place here. Directly on the Brunei River, close to the old palace, is a tomb that contains the sarcophagus of Sultan Bulakar V. Its splendor is a reminder of the 16th century, when Brunei's power was at its zenith and it had almost the whole of Borneo under its control. Amid the hilly river landscape are further tombs of the royal family, such as that of Sultan Sharif Ali. Returning to the city, we visit the Pasar Garong, a busy fish market. When the fresh catch has arrived, a huge variety of fish and seafood is appetizingly displayed on the stalls. Potential customers inspect the goods and bargain for the best price. The sale agreed, the produce is skillfully prepared, ready for the table. Here the rivers and the sea are free from pollution and there's an abundance of fish. Rainforests, mangrove brush and untamed land the exotic landscape that each new visitor is eager to experience. So, we're going on a mangrove tour. On a classic longboat powered by outboard motor, we travel on the Brunei River and are soon surrounded by mangrove brush. Tropical thunderstorms and monsoon rain create dense vegetation. The ensuing humidity produces lush flora. Next, we return to the city. On the 30th of December, 1992, the Royal Regalia Museum was inaugurated by the Sultan. Huge gilded carriages are on display and are used by the royal family during ceremonies of state such as coronations and birthday celebrations. Fine armor, lances and colorful military sunshades are exhibited around the carriages. In addition, the striking domed building contains the regalia of the Sultan's family. Bandan Serai Bagawan is a modern town with wide streets, palace-like administrative buildings and various premises to let that are often empty. A designer town that promises much prosperity. Just like his father, Sultan Hassanil Bolkaya had a mosque built to commemorate the 25th anniversary of his rule. It was to be the largest and the most abundant in the entire realm. Indeed, no other building is permitted to be taller than its golden cupola and minarets. The architecture of the mosque and its slender minarets highlight a change in design. The surrounding water basins and fountains are truly impressive. Islam is a state religion. The monarch assigns the faith. It is an absolute command to which people must obey.
This contemporary mosque is open to everyone. However, prayer in the mosque is limited to men only. Women are not allowed to pray alongside men. A large flight of marble steps leads to the first floor, and the bright inner couplers are most welcoming. Open arcades enclose the large prayer hall that is accessible from several directions. The main entrance is only used by the Sultan himself. No expense has been spared on the marble floors and wonderful glass chandeliers. And the five pillars of wisdom are decorated by fountains. Small boats travel along the canal to the morning market. It's a traditional market and all is quite serene, in contrast to the hubbub on the opposite side of the canal. The Tamo Kinge market is known for its extensive variety of produce and in common with markets throughout the Arab world, the spices are piled up sky high. There's also a good supply of fresh and appetizing seafood, plus a splendid array of exotic fruit. In former times, the market was used to exchange produce from the inland with produce from the coast. Fish and salt were exchanged for rice, fruit and vegetables. Here, markets are synonymous with bargaining. Customers observe, wait and chatter. They compare the produce and assess its price. Nearby, an old red-painted Chinese temple catches the eye. It is the religious center of various minorities. Malays, Chinese and Indians represent the largest ethnic groups, each having saved a part of their culture in this tolerant melting pot. The Chinese were among the first immigrants to come here. The men and women of the Chinese Empire were known to be skillful in handling money, and so owned shops and numerous companies. On the riverbank, speedboats await their passengers. The boats travel to the remotest locations, and we're going to use one to travel to Bangar. The boatman steers the boat through the many branches of the river and the water splashes wildly into the impenetrable mangrove brush. Suddenly, we arrive at the river harbour of Bangar. From here, we continue by car. Our destination is the Temburong National Park. It consists of tropical jungle that became a conservation area in 1991. The jungle is mainly accessible by water. We travel up river in a traditional longboat. It's ideal for the river and easy to maneuver along calm areas and small rapids. We stop at some small wooden steps. Hundreds of steep steps lead to a popular attraction, a canopy walkway. Five watchtowers are connected by various chain bridges high above the treetops. There's a fabulous view over the jungle. A jungle aged hundreds of millions of years, the oldest in the world.
Back at the river, it's become quite busy. Several longboats are waiting to land their passengers. The Temburong River flows gently along the wide riverbed. Occasionally there are rapids. It's a river of many moods. There are no crocodiles on the banks and no poisonous snakes in the water. A car returns us to the river harbour in Bangar and back to civilization. Here speedboats are waiting to take us back to the capital. They're always on time. And again the water splashes out as the speedboat takes a bend. It's amazing how the boatman finds his way through the confusion of waterways. Soon the city appears. The Malay Technology Museum features the traditional lifestyle of the people of Brunei. It's a typical water village with huts and wooden bridges. The straw-covered huts are the original size and can be entered. Thus, they provide a good insight into the life of the local people. Various arts and crafts, such as metalwork and weaving, are on display. The ingenuity of the work is plain to see. The daily life of the fishermen is also featured. Traditions that are handed down from one generation to the next. In the central harbour, water taxis await their passengers. Long and beautifully painted boats made of marantai wood. From here, we're taken to another world. At the junction of two muddy grey waterways of the Brunei River, there's an historic location, Kampung Aye, a water village. A little of the old world that the Sultan could not reinvent and adorn with gold leaf. Most of its inhabitants refused to move to the mainland. Each building and adjoining pathway is built on posts. Yet there is both an electricity and drinking water supply. But the humidity is almost unbearable. Plants decorate the terraces and TV aerials are everywhere. Around 30,000 people live here. For those who inhabit this place, history is a living thing. Since the 16th century, this settlement constructed on posts has seen little change. A place of silence and contemplation. The interior of the buildings makes it easy to forget that the village is situated amid the Brunei River, which is rich in fish. Yet everything is balanced on posts. Goods and produce are transported by boat and the village seems to be just one large family unit. In addition to several small huts, there are also schools, Mosques, a police station, post office, cigarette store and hospital, everything is built on posts. Here in the old water village, time goes by at a tranquil pace. When returning to the mainland, it's easy to ask oneself, how long will this historic gem survive? The Tasek Terimbun Nature Reserve can only be reached by car. An idyllic landscape within the jungle. 
500 meters long and 180 meters wide. This is the location of the largest lake in Brunei. Romantically framed by marshland, tall reeds and lowland forest that reflects in the water. Around 500 years ago, the Dusan tribe settled on the banks of the lake and their burial places are still worshipped at today. The small island in the middle of the lake is accessible from the mainland via a wooden bridge. There's a small fee that everyone is happy to pay. In view of all the wonderful nature here, it's quite easy to see how a legend can become reality. Imbun, the son of Chief Belite, was hunting in the jungle when he suddenly discovered that he had lost his bearings. Then he discovered the lake. Soon his tribe settled on its banks and was nourished by its rich supply of fish. One of the richest men in the world, the Sultan of Brunei, not only owns a huge palace with 1,789 rooms, but also a splendid luxury hotel, the famous Empire. This luxurious complex is located within a tropical park. Huge glass walls allow light to penetrate the gigantic hall that is several stories high. The hotel is known as a kingdom within a kingdom because some of its suites are the size of exclusive family homes. Here everything that is on display is exquisite and expensive. The luxurious suites contain several bedrooms and the most modern equipped bathrooms. The living rooms are almost overloaded with mahogany furniture and silk cloth decor. The royal suites have a swimming pool in the living room. The hotel is the ultimate of luxury. Huge marble pillars with golden decorations support the roof of a large hall that resembles European design. Several moving stairways connect the semi-open floors of the atrium in which the multicolored marble is at its most magnificent. This large pool landscape on the shores of the South China Sea has plenty of room for everyone. No hustle and bustle here, just pure, unadulterated pleasure. Palm trees flank several pools. A la carte restaurants serve the finest haute cuisine. And a viewing tower waits to be climbed. A luxury hotel from the Thousand and One Nights financed by liquid gold. When the sun disappears beneath the horizon, the night market opens its doors. Wonderful aromas tempt visitors, and the appetizing display sets the senses on fire. For entertainment, there's Gerudong Park, just outside the city gates. An entertainment park that the Sultan inaugurated on his birthday. Each hour a music fountain comes to life, and various fountains move harmoniously to both music and lighting effects. Brunei a land that has almost lost its history while moving into modern times. 
a country that has grown amazingly wealthy since its gas has hissed and its oil has spluttered from deep below the ground. Liquid gold. Allah be praised.